I don't like giving warnings, and I debated about leaving this one. Uh, honestly, I feel like each guest should be allowed the opportunity to tell their stories, and you, the listener, gets to decide for yourself if you want to hear them or not. However, I do know that some listeners tune into my show with their children, and others might struggle with some of the elements of the stories that follow. Now, while my explicit warning serves as a good enough heads up about explicit language that sometimes occurs on my show, please be advised that the following episode contains stories of a sexual nature, and while they are presented to increase understanding and insight, they might be uncomfortable for some listeners. Thank you. Uh, so I um, accidentally became a porn star where I, uh, I'm a, I'm a hardcore 24 seven kinky fetishist. I'm, uh-huh. I'm lifestyle. And, uh, what had happened is that I had found the lifestyle and I was busy running around being a naked pervert. And someone was like, you know, yo rain, you should put in an application to kink.com and uh, they'll pay you to do the shit you're already doing for free. And I was like, what? <laughs> Hello, welcome to Three Gigs, the podcast that tells the stories of three shows that have had a profound effect on a performer's life and career. Their very first show, their best show, and their worst show. I'm your host, Dominic Davy, and today our guests are Rain DeGray and Devlin, sex educators, adult performers, and professional naked people. This episode of Three Gigs is brought to you by FreshCleanTees.com. It works like a shave club, but they send you t-shirts, super awesome t-shirts. And they have a special offer for all the listeners of Three Gigs. Save 20% off your first order by going to FreshCleanTees.com and entering the coupon code GIG at checkout. That's FreshCleanTees.com with offer code G-I-G. Rain de Grey and Devil Lynn are professional naked people. No, no, that's really what they are, and that's how they describe themselves. Well, let's be fair. Rain de Grey is an author, actress, educator, and a professional naked person. And Devil Lynn currently works with Kink BNB, is a sex educator, a fierce mom, and a professional naked person. Both women have a history of fetish modeling and performing in adult films. And they've turned their collective experiences into classes that help demystify sexuality and help people understand their own kinks and how to properly and safely participate in the kink lifestyle. And along the way, they've become a very popular bondage performance act, being booked for a variety of events around the San Francisco Bay Area and beyond. Now, having known Devil Inn for many, many years and being fortunate enough to count her as one of my closest and dearest friends, when she contacted me to see if I would be interested in hearing about her and Rain's first, best, and worst performances on my podcast, I just couldn't refuse. While during the course of my career I've come to know a few adult performers, the realities of their craft and what went into it was pretty much unknown to me, and I think it's unknown to most people. While my show is focused primarily on musicians because I am one, I never intended to limit myself to just musicians. I wanted to try and talk to any kind of performer I could. And this was an opportunity to hear stories I've never been privy to before. So what came of it is one of the longest shows I've ever done, and honestly probably my most interesting interview. Rain and Devlin were frank and honest and absolutely amazing, and I'm happy to provide this little window into their lives through the experiences that they've had and the stories of the performances they were willing to share with us, starting with their first performance ever. So my very first show ever, um, we're, both the people you have here are professional naked people. And um, basically our shows uh, involve us not wearing much clothing. Uh, my very first uh, show actually involved um, a surprise fisting. So I had, you never know when you're going to be, you never know when you're going to be a Muppet. Surprise, your fist is uh, inside me. I yeah. didn't, see. didn't see that one coming. Uh, so I um, accidentally became a porn star, where I uh, I'm a I'm a hardcore twenty four seven kinky fetishist. I'm, uh-huh. I'm lifestyle, and uh, what had happened is that I had found the lifestyle and I was busy running around being a naked pervert, and someone was like, you know, yo Rain, you should put in an application to kink.com, and uh, they'll pay you to do the shit you're already doing for free, 
And I would say, what are you talking about? Are you trying to tell me I could pay my rent getting getting paid to do the shit that I love and I'm doing for free? So I'm like, okay, fuck it. I'll put in an application to kink. Like, what's the worst that's going to happen? They're going to turn me down? And, like, I didn't, I didn't think that they were going to accept my application. I'm heavily tattooed. Uh, you know, I, I, I didn't put in the application until I was 30 years old. And I, mean, I don't think of myself as, like, this, like, super glamour puss. So I'm like, all right, fuck it, whatever, I'll put in the application. Kink got back to me in a week. And they're like, hey, would you like to do Wired Pussy with Princess Donna? And I, I have that was a- my first shoot with them too. Right. And I have, a, I have a, a personal preference for thin brunettes. Like, I'm just, I'm all about thin brunettes. They're totally my cup of tea. And like Princess Donna is just like, oh my. Like I, I have a crush on her to this day. She's captivating. I mean, she's crazy. I've had her foot in my mouth. Dude, I, who hasn't? That's a slutty foot. She, I mean, crazy thin brunettes are my my personal predilection. I'm just like, oh my. And I don't really okay. feel submissive to women a lot. But like, mm-hmm. Princess Dawn is the type of person where she just walks into a room and you're like, what can I get you, Princess? How can I make your day better? Is there any, I mean, and she, I'm like, wait, wait, wait. I, you're gonna, yeah, yes, please, sign me up. I'll, I'd like to do this. And I, I'd never shot before. Like, it was my first time and I was going to be on camera and I was terrified. Yeah, I would imagine you'd be really nervous. Oh, so fucking nervous. I've been at it for a decade. I still get nervous. You don't ever, like, heaven forbid I ever get to the point where I'm jaded. Like, wow. but it's just like butterflies, just shaking. And the the weirdest thing that I remember is that the floor is built to look like wood, but it's actually this weird squishy rubber foam. Mm. So even though it looks like a hardwood floor, the room bounces. So it has a very surreal effect. And they have all these stage lights, so it's super bright. So I walk in, and the floor is squishy like I'm walking on the moon, and I'm just sweating. I'm pouring sweat from the stage lights, and there's Princess Donna. And I'm, she's going to fuck me up and make me come. Like, this hot chick is going to, like, beat me and have sex with me, and then they're going to give me money. How fucking <laughs> crazy is that? Oh, my, I'm totally down. And uh, it, uh, Wired Pussy is an uh, electro-torture site. Mm-hmm. So they torture you with electricity. And Princess Donna, she's sitting there, very regal and elegant. And she's like, now, Rain, uh, what we're going to do is you're going to get on your hands and knees. And I'm going to cattle prod you. And if you move the slightest inch, this shoot is over. Well, I don't know if you've ever been hit with a cattle prod, but ca- they're designed <laughs> you know. they're designed to move cows. Yeah. And I weigh significantly less than a cow. Oh, yeah. So I'm like, okay, all right, here we go. I'm not going to move. Totally not cute snort, by the way. <laughs> well, I'm not going to move. And I, even though my brain was like, shall not be moving, she hit me and my, I squealed like a dying goat and I involuntarily lurched forward. Couldn't, I could not help it. And she was disgusted. She's like, this is the level of talent they're giving? I can't work with this. This, no, that this shoot is over. Get your clothes, <laughs> go upstairs, I go to talent, and I'm canceling the shoot, I'm done. She's a brilliant fucking woman. And I'm, I start, I'm crying, I'm just like totally, just, I'm like, well, I suck as a model, I, who knew they were this strict? Wow, okay, and I get my clothes, and I'm just gonna go up, I failed as a model, they don't want me, Princess Dawn is really hot, but she's mean, and I get like two steps with my clothes naked, just fucking just crying. And she grabs me by the back of my hair and she flings me down on that weird, spongy, rubbery, fake wood. And she's like, where the fuck do you think you're going? And she slams her fist in me. I'd never been fisted before in my life. She has tiny little fists. So, I mean, it's just like, it just slid in. And um, I didn't, I, before I knew it, I was her Muppet. And that was my very first shoot. And when it actually, when it posted, people thought I was an amazing actress like she really sold being distraught when Princess Donna kicked her out. Wow! Like I mean, she really made that. I'm like, I wasn't acting. I thought she was kicking me out because I sucked as a model. Gosh. Anyhow, that was how I got pissed for the first time, and that was my first gig. Well, congratulations. That is the only fisting story I have ever <laughs> had on the show, and surprise fisting story. Ta-da. No, but like in all seriousness, like I, one of the most interesting things about the show is that I get to talk to a lot of people who perform for a living, and what their first performances was. And 
one of the things that fascinated me most going into this particular interview is that of all the different stories I've heard, including my own that I experienced, we didn't have to, most of us don't have to do it naked. <laughs> and I just thought like, that's a really interesting dynamic, even for a naturally kinky person, like to sit there and go, okay, I'm going to There's nowhere to hide. And nowhere I have nothing. I have a Lights base. Lights are everywhere. Right. Yeah. I have a base to hide behind. Even right. a singer has a, a mic, yeah. which is yeah. a weird you thing. You can but, really hide behind a mic. you can. Yeah. But like, I've, one thing I've always thought about adult performers mm -hmm. is you have nothing, nothing between you and the audience or nothing between you and a camera and it's just you're putting everything out there that everybody else is right. in addition mm -hmm. to doing it naked so I always thought that was an amazing aspect where I thought I, I always thought I don't know how it's challenging how do it. it's incredibly challenging I feel like I got my feathers plumped up Jeez, it's just the things. Awesome. Awesome. things. It's it's it, but the thing is it's you have to get into the headspace. Right. You can't. I did. Uh, I was a talent booker for insects for three years, and we, you know, I very learned very quickly. If a shoot falls through, you're not able to pick up and get a model and have her be there in forty five minutes. Like you don't do fill ins. You can't fix a shoot if it falls through for the day. In order to get into the headspace, because people think that there's no. I mean, it's not that there's acting in porn. But it is a performance. It's a performance art. And for me to be able to do a shoot, I have to prepare for it for weeks. I have to get into the headspace. There's an entire ritual with the grooming. You're centering yourself. I really have to find my zen. Mm -hmm. I'm not just able to just whip out my vagina and like, let's go for it. And it's like that with all of the performers. Like if you, you have to get into, into shoot space, like you're, you know you're shooting for the day. There's a huge ritual that goes with it. And you've seen me pre-performance. Yeah, like, like, like I'm like, I'm like, no, I can't have you, like outside influence, like right really, beforehand. Yeah. Like I'll be like super bouncy crazy and then like right beforehand, I'm like, no, headspace, focus. don't fuck with it. Right. See, that's amazing because I would say that there that that does exist in every of course. performance, but not I, I mean like the extent of how you're describing, like I don't spend days preparing, but I understand because what I'm like when I perform, it's a very different situation. Like, like it's just as just we said, like there's so much you're putting out there, so much you have to send yourself and prepare yourself for this performance. It's very different. Like, and and like I said, you guys put so much more out there. That's one of the things I found I think of so fascinating because, for as however terrifying it might be for me to walk out on stage in front of however many people or in a hometown or stuff, I'm like I'm clothed and hiding behind a base. Like, there's a certain amount of, like, I can hide, and I just, it's really fascinating to me about that part, like, how you expressed, you were, the first time, you were like, I have no idea, I, this is me, I'm here to, at the mercy of, of everything. So the irony of that is, I would actually find it way harder to do what you do, because I, like, when you put me in a kink scenario, and naked, and there's people who all understand what's going on. Like, I feel like the most me I've ever been. And it's everywhere else where I'm like, what mask do I have to put on? I'm like, I don't know. I can take all that shit away and I can just be me. Even if it's like an elevated performance of me, like I can be this raw and intense person for a fucking full day that most people don't ever get to do. And that is magical which is why i keep doing it it's been oh awful. yeah definitely i it, mean that that is why that is why we do it it's incredibly cathartic mm -hmm. and it's it, it there is a ritual to it well i mean we do we do kink bdsm uh porn and we don't we're not really doing like la like jump on a bunch of dicks oh, porn so that's the funny story though but you've done you did naughty america right that is my first shoot actually was a total vanilla porn no um it was so much better than that um, it was so this my first segue. shoot I took time off of work which was extra interesting because I was working at the same company my mom was and I was just like yeah I'm just going down to LA to visit some friends what had happened and shoot some porn yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had connected with um, this director on Suicide Girls um, named Ian Mackay back when MySpace was a thing. And I remember when MySpace was a thing. Yeah. And, uh, um, you know, 
he had made it clear don't contact him until you're 18 and like I that wasn't just how I rolled and I just pretended that didn't exist there and we had this like really great friendship and then when I turned 18 I was like so I want to shoot porn and he's like dude we've been talking for like two years and this has never come up like what's up I'm like so I turned 18 and he's like I really want to be upset at you right now but the fact that, that you're that much of a pervert makes me respect you more. And at this point, it's too late. I'm like, I never sent you any pictures that could get you in trouble. He's like, and I thank you for that. <laughs> um, so he hooked me up. It's actually nice to hear, I think, for people who don't know how this works, that there is rules that are followed. Like, oh, really like strict. Really yeah. strict rules are followed. And that he was actually upset. <laughs> like, he, he wanted to be upset. Like, if I had told him a day before I was 18, he would have been, like, livid at me and, like, just cut everything off. But since we were already past that, we had a friendship for two years. It was, like, platonic, but we talked about, like, creepy old man things because that's who I am on the inside. Um, it was fine because there was no illegal dialogue that went on there. Um, and so then, so he introduced me to a friend. It's like, oh, she works for Naughty America and does talent booking and... So I set up a shoot. They started this alt side um, called uh, Naughty Flip Side, and they brought me down. I never felt so amazing. Like I got STD testing, I got my makeup done, I got all dressed up and fancy, and you'll appreciate this. The premise of it was very silly, not to be taken seriously, and I had a cool rock band called Mannequin. Oh. And uh, there there was there was a seven string bass guitar involved. It's a great in tie it. in, I'm impressed. <laughs> it's, like, it, I managed to tie this in. I still have the shirt. I have my own band shirt by the way. Okay. And I wear it proudly. Uh, one of the most happy moments for me was the fact that I had brought my suitcase full of clothes and Gia Paloma who is amazing in her own right, first donkey punch on film, it's a true story, ended up wearing some of my clothing. And so I was like, oh my God, Gia Paloma's in my clothes and she's naked underneath. You're such a pervert. <laughs> You're such a pervert. Oh, yeah, it gets better slash worse. Um, the bracelet that I'm wearing in one of the cover shots is actually a Harry Potter release book bracelet it just happened to be fluorescent and green and work perfectly with the uh our electro band tie-in i'm sure jk rowling really (laughs) (laughs) i think she would she's a feminist um and so i am getting into this mess and i love it we're taking like these like ridiculous glamour shots i never thought of myself as like a hot person and then spoiler alert she's really hot spoiler alert she's very hot yes and then, like, they're giving me, like, all these hot people to have sex with, like, and it's, my first scene is a foursome with Roxy DeVille and Gia Paloma and Marcos Leon, and I'm like, this is the best day ever. And when you get to um, have sex with multiple people, they pay you more. So I was like, how is this a thing? Um... The only weird thing is, by the way, foursomes, completely awkward to shoot on film because you have to have everyone be visually open to the camera. Right, you're cheating towards the lens the entire it's very, time. It's very unnatural. No one talks like <laughs> and, that in real life. And so, like, you got, like, a foot there, and then, like, I got my foot up on the other couch. It's it's super long and extended, and, like, like hold on, arch your back because it looks more natural. It's not. It's <laughs> not natural at all. Yeah. And, uh, you know, somebody's looking... A pussy and somebody's got like balls in their face and it like it's this circus show of sexy and amazing things um but that was my first introduction to porn and I was kind of fucking hooked after that yeah. um and then and then I was recommended to kink.com which got me down a rabbit hole that was far deeper and more amazing mm-hmm. uh, so, so, yeah. you, so you weren't really you didn't the way you describe it you don't ever sound like you were nervous were you it was the it best like thing you ever. Were just so excited over the experience, you yeah. didn't seem to have time. And then next thing you know, it, you're cheating towards the lens and balls and face and it was legs on head. It was great because, um, like, 
so one of the things about porn is while there's certain degree of storyline and production, a lot of any scripting or finalized content happens probably about an hour before you actually start filming. And so we all are like sitting around and coming up with these promises of why we're in this huge fuck fest and <laughs> coming up with dialogue on the fly and it's ridiculous and we're we're being like super cheesy porn ridiculous quite on purpose mm -hmm. and we had this interview actually that's how it started that's that was the premise was an interview with the band and um a horny band that just couldn't stop fucking each other well you know that's how you fuck your way to the top oh of course right. like Ambitious. the Lana Del Rey you know mm -hmm. fucked my way up to the top <laughs> Not a good, so, I'm not a singer, <laughs> by the way. We both really love Lana Del Rey. Lana Del Rey is amazing. Yeah. I mean, can't she be a dream guest on this? I would oh, love please. to hear what she if, has if to say. If you do that, I just want to be a fly on one the wall. Day, one day, I did yeah. walk, uh, I did meet her. And yeah, when yeah. she recorded at KGO. K-Fog. K-Fog. Yeah. I was uh, walking down a hallway, I and I hadn't heard she was going to be there because she doesn't like to perform in front of an audience. So when they would have these like live performances we invite audiences in people who won to be able to witness but she was like nope no audience I just if you want some exclusive songs from me I'll just perform them and so that's how it would work so I, but so nobody knew she was there because they don't even let the employees in she records by herself her exclusive songs are some of her best and the dripping sexuality I'm totally okay with her doing alone right. because it is masturbatory worthy. Well, I walked it's funny you say that cuz I walked by her and I saw this girl sitting awkwardly like standing awkwardly in the hallway and I just smiled at her and I was like, "Hello." And she's like, "Hi." And I was like, "Wow, that little 14-year-old girl looks a lot like Lana Del Rey." <laughs> and I was like, but she wasn't wearing any makeup. She was just like dressed normal, like really down and she just looked really young and she was really short. And I just walked by, I was like, oh, somebody's daughter's here. You know, like I, she looks a little like Lana Del Rey. And then I walked by again, and I was like, and she looked at me, and she was like, hey, do you know where the restroom is? And I was like, yeah, it's over there. And then I was like, excuse me, are you Lana Del Rey? <laughs> and she's like, yeah. And I was like, very nice to meet you. And I think she looked at first like, oh, God. And it's then, one of those things. And then I was just like, oh, yeah, great to meet you. And you're very talented. And she's like, oh, thank you so much. And I was like, the bathroom's right there. And so, you know, she came back, I chatted with her a second before she got whisked away to do the performance. But I literally walked by, and my first impression was like, wow, that 14-year-old girl looks a lot like Lana Del Rey. I'm sure she'll be glad to hear that. I'm sure. I'm sure I'm guaranteeing she'll be on the show. I edit that story out. So, um, but that's really an interesting, you know, I, you guys touched on something kind of interesting that I, I wanted to ask about before I moved on to the next performance, but um, about how... Uh, nobody fucks like that in real life. Like totally. when you're talking oh, to nobody, that, yeah. I think nobody fucks like that. That's one thing that you hear about so often is how whatever <laughs> current porn is really popular, that's how it affects and teaches some people how to have sex. And then they find out that it doesn't realistically work like that Not all the time. No. You know what's great like that. about that is I can always tell like who like really studies porn and like really is trying, which I you know, bless their hearts, but you'll get these people and you'll like be having sex and they do a thing and it's... This is in real life. This is in real life um, and you can tell that they really are trying and watch a lot of porn and they'll put their arm behind their back while they're fucking, oh. which is an only on only camera on thing camera do you because because somewhere. you don't want to block Lock. the lovely view. So you and do a lot of hand and so you're just like yeah, yeah. and so you're opening wow. up and you're just like so it's like it's like a dead giveaway right. and yeah. it's it's to wow. me to me it's something I never mentioned it's very endearing because I'm like you're opening up to the camera mm -hmm. well then mm -hmm. I see I see you're putting on your a game mm -hmm. I appreciate this that's really you can't have though. dangling limbs right. so you gotta you gotta yeah. tuck them. Yeah. And you gotta it, it, be it tilt at an angle. Yeah. It's super unrealistic. But, but yeah, I imagine is it, it would be really distracting and be really difficult to... Like, that's something you'd have to get used to performing, but it sounds like you guys both in your first experiences like dove right in and was like... I'm, we were, you, you, if you look probably, people yeah. that we are, that we dive right in. 
And if you probably look at our first content, it's probably not our best because you learn better angles. And And they don't tell you. You have to pick it up. Like, there's no guidebook. Like, they should give you, like, a manual. That's the problem. There's no one to direct and say, hey, Uh -uh. shoot that out. No, 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 no. Like, they'll direct you, like, on the positions they want you in. But, like, there's no, like, better or worse unless you're shooting photography. Um, stills, they'll be more forgiving, but, like, once you're going, you're fucking, and that's it. Yeah. Like, that was, like, the best thing about getting into porn was, like, I was, like, so, you're telling me I get to have sex with a hot person, which is, like, a pretty good start. Yeah, that's nice. That's nice. They're gonna have proven STD testing within the last three days. Super nice. Super nice. Really into that. We're going to have an amazing time. It's going to be documented. Y- yes, yes. And you're going to look pretty doing it. Damn straight. And they go away afterwards, and you don't have to deal with any bullshit. <laughs> right. I'm all, all with you to the last one. <laughs> well, no, no, no. I, I love connecting and, like, all that part, but you've met some of the people you've performed with. You don't want all of them to call you. No, no. <laughs> only uh, just, no. Just I a mean, handful of really awesome Well, ones. I'm really selective with who I work with, though. I turn yeah. down plenty of shoots. I do, like, too. That's an interesting question, too, because I, that I have, just to add on, since technically my show is three questions, but I always add questions, but um, one of the things that I have heard is that people are always surprised how how small of a community it is. Oh, so, yeah. like, I, the adult yeah. act performers that I have encountered have had, have had genuine sex far less than some like with far less people than some people would presume the presumption is that the performers that as performers you're just fucking the world but Um, like in the reality it's it's a more more of a close-knit group and you guys have preferences of whom you work with and Mm -hmm. that's well you also have to find people who are incredibly understanding about what you do and aren't going to be like shamey douchebags like that you just can't have that in your life so um i would say the majority when I think about it, I can only recall one person who is an amazing slut on and off camera. And, you know, she only shot for the fun of it. Uh, but most of the people that I know professionally, they've, you know, during the duration that they were in the industry, had maybe one to three partners tops that, you know, that they were, most of them were monogamous um, except for, you know, professionally. But the thing is, as a performer, the, the, well, people people misinterpret it because they see us fucking on camera. Therefore, they must they presume that we must be spreading it around like peanut butter. Mm-hmm. And we can't. Your job is to fuck. And in order to fuck, you have to have a clean STD test. Yeah. You have to. You can't perform without a clean STD right. test. If you're not safe with your fucking, if you're going getting drunk like a civilian with, oh, I'm going to go out to the bar Friday night... I'm going to have, you know, a couple Long Island iced teas. Woohoo, it's a party. I go home. It's dark. I don't see the, what, that, what, that's a dead nick from shaving, right? Whoops, herpes. Like, we don't have the privilege. We can't do that. Yeah. A, a dirty test, you have to, you can't shoot for half a month. You can't pay your rent. Like, we don't, we're making a living by having clean genitals. Mm-hmm. If you don't have clean genitals, you can't shoot. If you can't shoot, you can't pay your bills. Well, performers can't be. We can't be slutty. You have to be so careful because your livelihood depends on your junk being in working order. And also looking <laughs> good doing it. Like you can't like have in. You can't. Do, yeah, you have to work out. Like you have to be. You have to go to bed at a reasonable time. You can't party. People think that porn stars are like slutty and full of Xanax. We can't do. If you're slutty and full of Xanax, you're, you're gonna look like shit. You're gonna look camera. like you're not gonna get work. Like right. were you like. Porn performers are going to bed reasonable hours doing yoga and eating a bunch of broccoli. Like, that's <laughs> what the job entails. But that's amazing. And because that's, that's an amazing means. stance. Like, that's an amazing thing that people, I guarantee, don't know. Or of don't even not. think no, about no, no, or no. consider Oh, yeah. At all. Oh, we, we get, like, confronted with that all, all the, the time. time. And be, here's my dick. And it's like, oh, I'm supposed to be so captivated by dick that some random dude sending me a picture of his penis is going to send me into a cock-locked trance and I'd be like, give me your address. I will jump on your dick right now. Like, that's literally the mindset. And like, and then I'm a disappointment as a porn star because I'm not willing to... I have people that live in different states that dem- they don't want to buy a plane ticket. They are demanding. They get on social media and they demand that I buy a plane ticket, fucking fly to Kansas and have sex with them. And they're shocked I wouldn't do it. 
how much free time do you think I have? How much money do you think I have? That I'm like, sure, Billy Bob from Kansas, I'll buy a plane ticket and go and get on your dick right now. And, and then they get upset that you're not fucking them. It's like, are you, dude, are you fucking insane? And then they veer to getting angry. They're like, I've seen you fuck on camera, therefore you must be the world's biggest slut. So because you're not having sex oh, with yeah. me, you hate me personally. Yeah. It's me that you hate. Uh, so weird. you're a fucked up cunt and I hate you. I'm going to stalk you and rape you. That's yeah. not like, I, I wish that she was overblowing I'm it, not. but that totally happened. It's totally, I just, So there's like this sense of ownership that your fans yeah. have for you guys. Uh, yeah, that they, they own you. They, they, well, they, they, they think that they, they, that, you know, because they bought this clip this one time that they own you. It's like, no, no, no. You own the clip, like when you buy a movie, you, you understand this, that like you own the fantasy, the production of you don't actually, like, have any ownership over the people. Like, you understand that with traditional media, but, like, No, but they don't. It's they the don't. same thing. Oh, it's yeah. the, it's what it is, is it's an artificial sense of familiarity. Oh, yeah. When right. someone sees you on film, they know what you sound like talking, they know what you look like, they know the sound of your voice, they know how you hold your body, they know you as a person. Oh, yeah. And they know you so well, they become friends with you. And they become so invested in a friendship they're personally betrayed when the friendship they know they have with you, you're not responding in kind. And you're like, dude, there's just one of me. And there's a thousand people that think they're best friends with me. And then uh, even though I've not met or interacted with any of these thousand people, when I'm not acting like the friend they know that I am, they're personally betrayed. I've actually been always really impressed um, with how you, Mr. Dobby, um, have always been the most congenial person to all your fans in this way that I don't get to witness a lot of people do um, where you make fans feel really connected but like there's this clear boundary at the same time and I was always really impressed with that even from a young age and have tried to channel it I think I've probably mostly failed um, to do to like embody that of like having this like friendly outlook and like you know, giving that connection and can, and then like, but I got to disappear and be professional now. Uh, and it's it's a really hard balance, um, especially I, with being naked. Is. Yeah, no, I think the added uh, the added impact of the naked, I think, does change things a lot. Um, I think, I mean, for the a thousand that. I think identify so much as as being friends with you. I mean, I'm sure there's another couple thousand that are respectful and understanding. But oh, it's, oh yeah, but sure. it is there is that that element. And with at least with, I, I'm definitely less open than I was when I was younger. For people who came to my shows and met me then, I definitely kept a much less of a of a wall. But now um, it's still important to me that when I'm in the mode. And I am talking to people that I, I I connect with them that they truly love something I've done. So I try to like give them that connect like to give that connection and be real about it. I'm not faking it, but at the same time, there's always that um, element. And I hope I don't offend anybody by admitting this. There is an element of me uh, often like how you would guide somebody almost as like a server like and now we'll be seated sir thank you so much okay now we're going over here you know like almost how maybe like disney does it where they guide you into the line and then they guide you out of the ride and and everything's really kind and sweet but you're you're still moving right along mm -hmm. and um because you're right there is a moment where i have to stop and go uh and be and be performing now and and be in that mode and i can't i can't do it but but i have changed um a lot sense of being young like I won't be like people who come to, to my shows will figure out real quick I'm not alone and oh, yeah. I won't be alone with anybody like I'll be with one other band member and if it's not a band member even if it looks like I'm alone I'm there with a crew member yeah. who's there to pull me out or to stop it immediately you know and and went if, just if your, your, your safeguard yeah, because I have a lot more anxiety in in crowds and in public than I used to. I didn't used to when I was when I was younger and first performing. I was like, "Woo, they're all friends. We're all equal." And then now 
I'm much more reserved, but still try to be friendly. I just, I have to have somebody there, otherwise anxiety will mm-hmm. build up. On the funny side, I interviewed him first. Just want to throw that you out did. there. You did. You interviewed me a long time. Yeah, with, with Alexis for, for our punk scene. Yeah. That's awesome. It totally happened. That's true. You did You did interview me before I ever got around to interviewing you. But the, in my defense, I did just start this show not that long ago. <laughs> so I never had an opportunity to interview people. But yeah, thank you for the compliment. Because I, I definitely would think, though, I will say this. After all that, in terms of me looking, like, as you say, like, you like how I handle it and how I try to, there's a couple things that I think make it easier. One, I'm male. And I know that's weird, but I no, do geez. notice, like... You have two female bandmates, so you, you get to observe it. And I've seen the reaction, like, where even at a festival, like, they're amazing women. Like you guys, they're amazing women, and they have these great presences when you're, when you meet them, you know, you're just, you can tell you've met something, you're, you're encountering, just like this, like, meeting you two, like, you're the same, like, you have a presence, there's something about you guys, it's just really cool, you can tell. And they have that, and I've seen people react to that and just get really ramped up and excited. But touring, uh, the best way I could describe it is the times that I've been in a band with all guys, and we've stayed at a house that a promoter had before we could afford hotels all the time and stuff. Um, they would be totally normal, and everything would be cool. And like, yeah, you can sleep here. And sometimes they'd want to throw parties because you're the band in town, and everyone wants to throw a party. And you're exhausted. And you're like, and thanks, you're just like, thanks, yes, I can't wait to step on my drinking. I have to, you have to get up so early and drive and do it all over again. But you know, and you're just sitting there like, that's totally how it is on this side. Totally, yeah. I want, I want a party. I, uh, I know, I'm not falling asleep. Can I, can I please bring you to bed? God damn it! So I just need like an hour to myself to you know meditate. Where can I? do like you're like having there fun, but they turn their I can hide the they turn their back and you want to cry. You're like, yeah. I'm just so tired. Yeah, yeah, okay. We, <laughs> but, we've been there. We feel you. We feel yeah. you. But um, those same people, really nice guys, when I came through in a band mixed with women and men, would get weird when the women were present. So as much as I would be like, yeah, everyone could handle it like me. I think there's a selection of circumstances. One. I'm not an adult performer, so there's not that ownership of like lust, you know. At <laughs> there's least baggage to having a vagina. Yeah, and it, the and contradiction then, is that we are selling ourselves as something that you desire, mm-hmm. and but it's so it's like I, you know it's, it's I, I understand where people are like well you can't have it both ways like you're you're presenting yourself as a commodity, lust after me, like that's the pitch. Right. But then people get weird about it. What I what I get the strongest is I get women that decide that we're best friends. And they get very weird and possessive. I had some woman, and she seemed really friendly Mm -hmm. on Twitter, and it got to the point that I actually followed her back because she seemed really cool. And the second I was following her back and she had access to my DMs, it was her life story. She was telling about her uncle that had passed away. Her family was mean to her. She had an autistic daughter. And like, I'm on set trying to work. And she's blowing up my DMs. It's as if she's texting me. And she's getting upset I'm not texting her back. And I'm like, honey, like I'm I'm at work. Like I, I don't know your uncle. I don't know your family. I've never met your daughter. I've never met you. And you've decided we're best friends to the point you're now getting angry and upset at me that I'm not responding quickly enough to the emotional outpouring. When you work as an adult performer, the world treats you like a therapist. I had some guy. I mean, I don't write back. You can't write back. You you I think can't. That's any sex worker. Actually. Any any sex worker people because you because you're being honest and you're being vulnerable and people respond to that. I had some guy. I never wrote him back. He he emailed me seven or eight times. He had a colostomy. He had a he had a colostomy bag. He'd had to have a surgery. He's telling me about his life, like his health issues. And I'm like, dude, I've never met you, and I'm not invested in your colostomy bag. But he was sending me multi-page emails about his health issues and what it's like to shit in a bag and you're like that's a lot yeah. and the the problem is with is that you have to sell yourself as accessible but the second that you open up the door if you respond to one email you have to respond to the other 150 and the second that you break off the communication they're doubly betrayed and hurt so you can't ever start the communication in the first place i think that's i think that that is something i mean to a great extent it does happen in music but i think that it happens more so in any kind of film because I think I, the 
I haven't had an actor, a professional actor on the show yet that is known and, and has a fan base. They would say the same thing. But I think yeah. they would say it breeds the ones an artificial that I have sense met, of familiarity. Totally. The ones that I have met have, have to be right. so careful to the extent that they can't even go to Disneyland no. without a production preparing right. for that because it's just not. Once they're seen, it's like people have that ownership, mm -hmm. that connection, and. I think that it is definitely something that if you, it's a weird thing too because I feel like any sort of performers, especially like yourselves that perform uh, on film, on digital, you know, in in a form in that format, that you're performing for people and they feel like they get to know you. Um, well, you're in their home, like it's yeah, it's not... a different sort of ownership. Though when they see you, it's like they just they have to to really connect. They want to show you how that you they've connected with you, and it's. And, and on the other side of it, you're just not ready for it. I always tell people, just be nice. Just be nice. Relax. I have, I have, nice. I have I'm severe so, social anxiety. Nice. And, like, so I don't bad. deal well with A lot with, of performers do. I do. I do. Severe. I mean, yeah. it's, 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 I mean, put me on a stage, and yeah. I'm fucking fine. I'm yeah. solid. That's because but, you're away from the people. Right, but in a crowd, like, I, I start to hyperventilate. No, I don't I like crowds as I much as I love large performing in front of large I, I, audiences. I, yeah. In oh, yeah. a crowd, Same. I have a really hard yeah. time. I, I get short of breath, and I get dizzy. Completely. And I start to shut down in a crowd. You take me out of the crowd and put me on a stage. I'm golden. Yeah. I'm totally relaxed. You put me on a stage or put me to work. Like, if I'm working, like, a conference, I'll be yeah. fine. Right. If I'm on a stage, I'll be fine. You put me with the rest of everyone else, and I'm like, I don't know I, I can't breathe. I get, yeah. you have, I get shut down. I think literally <laughs> the only difference with music is instead of as much as us, it's our songs mm -hmm. that that happens to. I have actually had been taken to task over somebody telling me what a song means. That, you that wrote. I wrote. And like, and but you don't understand the words that you wrote that right. came out of your pen. No, no, no. Let me tell you how you're wrong. And let and me explain to yeah. you the song. And I learned right away to not even argue that concept because what it means to me is no longer important. It, it's right. what what it's really about. It's what it's become to them, and they will. And a person can't let that go, and that's fine. But yeah, I think that the songs again provides a bit of a buffer zone, a little bit because like most people don't know how many of Sonar Bomb songs I've written, they don't even know that. Like, they don't even have that ability to understand that or even think that of that unless they've been really, really paying attention. But, like, again, I have a buffer zone. You guys are just, it's just you. And then you're well, just like, our, our, your vulnerable parts are the songs, and our vulnerable parts are our parts. Our vulnerable right. parts. <laughs> and and, and when, you, when you put yourself out there, when you put out your body, um, you're inviting the world to critique it. And people oh, yeah. are. And they feel like they have. They're a, oh, oh scathing. Yeah, oh, and I'm, it's, I'm it's old. So I'm I've ugly. Had I'm on fat. I, I love comments. being. And people they, take the time to tell me how fat I am. Yeah. Oh, I, I weigh. Got that. Uh, you're like a weepy I thing. I weigh a hundred and twenty-three pounds, and I'm five foot nine. And people I have never met, because if you're if you, if you're a woman, the insults are you're ugly and you're fat. And when men get pissed off at me, they will tell me that I am fat. Because that's just, that's their go-to, I'm trying to wound you. And I'm like, well, seeing that I'm 5'9 and 123 pounds, sure, go ahead and call me fat, but it's just like, or I'm ugly, or I'm old. And it's just like, when you're putting your body out there, they will wound. Yeah. I mean, they love no, critiquing. No, and they attack it. And, and they, I, another thing I will see sometimes, it's I great, see, though. is that people feel like they way. have the right, because you chose to be in front of. Right. I've had that. Oh, that even said we've to had us. emails that look exactly like that, but you chose it. Like you, yeah. you, you had to have known what you're getting yourself to. You're like, mm -hmm. just because I understand the concept of people are douchebags doesn't actually make it doesn't okay. Doesn't make that you're the reality douchebag. of right. it all that comfortable. And it's like I, I, I'm accident. I accidentally got into porn. I'm a performance artist. Like I'm an educator. Uh, I've done spoken word for the past fifteen years. Awesome. Like, uh, you know, I do live performances. We do bondage performances. Uh, I'm and art performances. And art, perf art performances were super. Art <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, there's a story there. <laughs> Don't you worry. Oh my Don't god, worry. you're so artistic. You're so, it's so beautiful. You speak to my soul. Speak to my soul oh. with your art. <laughs> we do artistic performances and stuff. Yeah, we do. 
Um, I'm so sidetracked now no, by the art. Okay. The art is dazzling. I'm well, you know, I should actually segue yeah. forward okay. in yes, the interview. Segue. So sorry, sorry. sorry. No, I told you, hyperverbal. This, no, this is a wonderful discussion. I, I really think that there are things that you guys have shared, and thank you for sharing them, that nobody thinks about when they think about adult performers at all. And if if this in, if that segue is able to inform somebody that they would behave slightly differently, it's worth. That's so worth putting one person. Out there. That's exciting. Like, Even yeah. if it's not like one of like anybody that are our fans, but just to another performer, yeah, that that'd be super back. rewarding. But that and that's good because I like I said I just I try to tell people just be nice, just be nice. It's easy. Be cool, and nice, and no touchy. I mean, I, I get it. I get <laughs> it. It's challenging because when you like when you meet an artist. Okay, here's here's an example. I went to Ape, and mm. I I'm super into uh, John Vasquez, Johnny the Homeless Tabloid. Oh, yeah. Right, right. Fantastic. So like, you know and, where half my name came from, right? No. So you know the character Debbie. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh my God, that's so fucking awesome. <laughs> so my pen name with my best friend in middle school was. Um, Debbie and she was Tenet and then our middle name so it was Tenet Renee and Debbie Lynn okay. and that is and that that was Debbie. so that was the first thing that I could think of that's because I hadn't thought about it on that first Wait, you shoot you think about the dog and the street you lived on mm. you didn't go I, there. oh no I know <laughs> what no 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 I no it's so much worse than that I didn't think of having a stage name until the paperwork was in front of me where I had to write it down. Oh, yeah, and you had to On that shoot. Right and you're like, ah! Oh. And I'm like, first thing that comes to mind, pen name for middle school. Wow. Yeah. There you go. And yes, it's, uh, yeah, it's awesome. I had a, I had a, a flirtation with Jonah for a while. We, I met him at Ape, and um, I was a huge fan, and I brought him a little tiny skull that I had packed in this, like, little, like, box you could open it up. It was, like, tissue and this skull. And we started emailing for a while. And, um, you know, he th was super cool. Uh, he cracked from the fame and the pressure. Yeah. People were sending him dead rats. Like, he just, I mean, the, I mean, what I get is a sliver of what that man was getting. But I remember just, like, being so in awe of him and so excited that I was, like, shaking. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, I have to, like, put myself in other people's shoes and realize that, I mean, obviously it's not like I'm some famous comic book artist, but, like, when you do something that resonates with people, they're gonna get excited about it, yeah. and I mean, I should be, I should be flattered, and I'm, and I should be honored, and I am. Um, it gets jarring when people put you in the role of being a therapist or a best friend, um, or when people get really angry and threaten to track you down and rape you and kill you. Yeah, and that's that's something wonderful that the internet has brought us. I mean, I oh. love the internet, but like oh. that it is reveals you it lifts up the lid, and you get to see how people are, and the, the truth is that, things, that like if this oh, is yeah. this is the honest level of what humans are, it gets a little discouraging. Yeah, yeah. So, so don't ever read the comment section. Just no, don't. I, no, it's a cesspit. No, it's a swamp. Oh, oh no, that's Kate. Kate. No, no, yeah, Kate she doesn't. Does. No. She did. And she did recently too, and, and it and it definitely affected her. It took a minute to figure out like. What was bothering her, and and it she read it the was, comments. She read section. the comments. Yeah, you can. You gotta stay away. Yeah. I learned the hard way. You don't fucking mm -hmm. look at the comments. You don't no. go near it. No. Put I the agree. comments down and back away slowly. Don't engage. Yeah. I'm really happy that I am face blind unless I know you. Like unless I've like really connected with somebody, I'm completely face blind. I don't, I don't actually see celebrities, even people that I know, who've been in like bands that I'm really a fan of. Um, and it's been great because I have these I've ended up having these wonderful interactions that people have like after the person's left has like mentioned who they are I'm like oh I didn't know that oh okay that makes so much sense <laughs> <laughs> you said like a little that makes so much sense that guy said something I knew it oh god oh no it's so bad <laughs> I was in New York and uh I was trying to stay out drinking uh not to drink, but just to stay out because I had a fight with the person that I was staying with and I just kind of wanted to just be Not by me. myself for a while. Not like it wasn't bad, mm -hmm. just okay. wanted to hang out. And so I went to this bar and then it closed and the other two guys I was hanging out with that were just bar stool mates were like, oh yeah, this place called Niagara is open until like really late. I was like, fuck it, let's Niagara. go. Yeah. 
And so we go, they have, like, it, like, it looks like this bougie bar, but it's not, and it has, like, these games. Then I sit down, and I'm talking with the people that I came with, um, but not really invested because we just happened to walk over to a bar together. And then there was these two other people to the right side of me, and I ended up talking with them. And I have this tendency to give people shit, especially when I first meet them. Mm-hmm. She does. It's true. Yeah. And um, we talk, and I find out that um, from Berkeley, and then I was like, to his friend, I was like, let me guess, you're like this, like, L.A. douchey hipster, totally was from L.A., and it, like, and the other guy from, like, Berkeley's, like, cracking up, and the night was just fun, it was bullshit, and we start dancing to, like, mo- like, they played, start playing Motown, and a whole bunch of us in the bar just start dancing to it. We were like swing dancing to Motown. It was amazing. It didn't even look like the kind of bar that would play this. And then we were playing like pinball. And my older the, brother was the bartender there for a long time. Yeah. No, uh, right? so, so maybe I met. So the yeah. two. So the two guys leave, and the gal that like I had just been dancing with was like, "That was really cool." And I was like, "But like that was like Billy Joel from Green Day." I'm like. Makes a little bit of some of those fe- okay, um, yeah, that makes a little bit of sense. Well, we just all had a wonderful time, and I'm so glad because like I probably would have acted like complete like numb nuts had I actually known right. that, and like probably been quiet and be like, I'm going over here because I don't know what to say to you. But instead, I like was just an asshole at but the you bar. Had a great time. Yeah, I had a great and like we all had a great time. There was there was like swing dancing to Motown, like how. Like, nobody gets to do that. It's great. <laughs> I mean, Billy people Joel. do. With, with Billy Joe from, from Green Day? Yeah. That's pretty awesome. It was That's really weird. Story. I I didn't, I didn't even, like, it, it yeah. took me a while. I'm like, yeah, he kind of does have, like, the same kind of hair, like, makeup. Yeah, and and, and then, hair. like, and it would make sense. He, there's probably another musician that does that thing. I'm an asshole. I wonder who the L.A. Awesome. douchebag was. I don't was. know, but it, like, I, I'm, like, such an asshole. Like, I'm, like, I'm, like... I find your refreshing I, I, honesty, your, your honesty refreshing. That's one of the things I like most about you. Well, I, just, I also like yeah. to tease people. I mean, I tease mm-hmm. myself, so, like, I, I take it as well as I can give it. But, uh, but it was it was just a genuinely, like, random fun night. Um, and, yeah, like, when that person pointed it out, I was like, oh... What? I'm so glad that I'm face blind because I don't think that night would have happened the same no, way had I had I recognized it. Like that, no. Yeah, so. that's so funny. All right, sorry. So, great, no, the great story. That was a great story. That was a it great, was. great story. Was, that was worth it. it that was, was worth it. it. She so, went swing dancing with Billy Joel. So, what would be the best show, best performance that you guys have had together or separate, whatever you prefer to, however you want to answer it. You know, I. I I fall on Twisted Windows, personally. Like, I, the energy from that night was just... Twisted Windows was, was magical. It really was. Uh, it, I, mine's, mine's being crucified upside down, underground. No, no, I but totally do, think it's do wonderful. Twisted Windows. Um, so, I've had a lot of great performances. Um, and there's so many things that I could say are the best in all these different ways, because there's just so many great performances. Um, but... I did this performance with Rain, um, and we were originally going to be on main stage, but we didn't get really back to them in time, so we ended up being on one of the auxiliary stages, which ended up working out to our benefit. What kind of be- what kind of event was this? Just so context. Okay. Um, so Twisted Windows is. Um, I think like a quarterly event that goes on in San Francisco. It's rope, bo- uh, primarily rope bondage, but they also do like um, less cir- contortion. S- yeah, circus stuff. Yeah. Okay. Um, and it's just like high end, kink friendly. There's auxiliary bondage going on around you. You can. Uh, last time, um, one of the gals that I know uh, was a canvas to be painted on by all the people who are coming. It's through. a kinky salon. Right. Of just you know perverts being perverts, and so okay. like you, so you, you were supposed to be on the main stage, and because you guys well were, there were there were reasons we got we they we were they offered to book us, mm-hmm. and there were some issues, and we weren't gonna go forward with it, and we were we hesitated for a moment, and 
the issues got resolved. And by the mm -hmm. time the issues got resolved, um, the booking was maybe yeah. slightly different, but it ended up totally working out for yeah. us. Oh, so we ended up being in this space that was really close to the door. Now, one of the things about that night that it really contributed is we had just done a rough play class together. Oh. Um, and we were really amped up because we were in teacher head space, which means you can't like do all the messed up things you want to do to a human being. And you're just teaching how other people we, to do we it. We co-teach a rough play class, which is about how to safely beat the shit out of people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we were so amped. We just had the adrenaline going. Right. And, so you were and like she that. had already like bitten me and I'd bitten her. I was so like we were like we were and, just like had all yeah. this energy. Yeah. And so we're getting dressed for this. Um, and then my pre-show anxiety shows up because I like I have to be in a centered headspace and yeah. like there's no backstage for where we are. It's like we're around there. people and I'm like I got it. Yeah. Like last five minutes, I gotta focus. I have to be in my like, be in the energy that I need to be in. Right. And right. we get down and we get this tarp down, and people start amassing around. And then everyone around us, I'm totally blank. I know that our alternative family is all there and watching mm -hmm. us, and I see them from time to time, but I'm completely distant from it once we start performing. And it's like this violent, like, shove around, yeah. ropes flying, um, there's show cold, and, like, she takes my head and, like, dunks it into Waterboarding this. Waterboarding her and drowning her and yeah. skull-fucking her. It was, oh. And, like, you know, there's, like, points where I'm, like, super close to passing out, my brain's super floaty, and there are pictures from it, and I remember it, but I don't remember it like right. that, because it was, like, in my head, it was just transcended, like, physical, like, presence. Like, I, it, like, I was just so into how much, like, she was drawing and, like, she was molesting me. She did this horrible thing. I'm so, so sorry. sorry. And I wanted to kind of use this as my worst to be an asshole to her, but, like, really, it ended up being a beautiful part of the performance, which is... So she's like tearing me around and being violent. Oh, I'm so sexy. I can be violent with you. And I'm going to take, take your hands are tied up and I'm going to take your panties off. Cut her panties. Cut them. She thinks that she cuts them and that it's like she's tearing them away. She's not cutting at this point. She's I had cut up the side of her panties and I attempted to then remove them because she was wearing a thong. However... Yeah. Her labia was attached like. to the panties. Well, A, she cuts one side, Only so one. there's so there's the other side that she has to rip away. And so she's giving me this, like, front wedgie of doom. Oh, and dude. this is... Front wedgie of doom. Her <laughs> fucking labia was, like, six inches away from her body. It was... There's photos. It, like, and so our friend The Silence captures this beautiful photo of when the other side decides to snap. My labia is being oh, stretched shit. out like Play-Doh, which is a way that I never want to see my labia captured again. Didn't know vaginal lips could do that. It was news to me. <laughs> I'm physically being oh, lifted no. off the ground by, by this. By her vagina. It's by true. my vagina. Yeah. My face is the sexy, ugliest sexy face. Sexy face. No. I disagree. That was sexy face. It was the ugliest face I've ever made. It's only sexy in the context that this is a horrifying and very authentic moment. It's so but, sexy. But realistically, it is, like... It's honest. It was raw and honest and sexy. It looks like somebody took the smudge brush in, it was just in I, like, you know, Photoshop and went... Bleh, on so, one on uh, side of my face and then up on the other. That's what you look like when it's, someone's lifting you up by your vagina. Yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. That happened to me. Who knew? Who knew? Um, and... I hated her in that she, moment, she, she's very and it was great to hate her in that moment, because then, like, when I get into that energy, like, I can come back at her, and I don't feel bad, even so in the bad. least. So I bad. got her, like, nipples in my oh, clutches. Oh, my God. She's right. And, like, I, I looked at her right Ooh. in the face, and she knew exactly why this was happening, because usually when I'm bottoming, that, like, right. I'll be resistant, but I won't actually be an asshole back. But she knew in that moment exactly why I, like, had a vice grip on her nipples. To, she was trying to rip my nipples off. No, no, no. I just she wanted to squeeze you know, felt, them into oblivion. Right, and no, no, it felt like they were trying to, were trying to remove them off of my breastuses. I felt my labia felt very much no, the same way. No, I understand, way. I understand. Yeah, no, point made. And then 
you know, just head being shoved in water and then yeah. choked and then being like skull fucked. Oh. There are some beautiful, lovely moments in that photo that I that really captured how amazing it was. But in my head, I didn't look like that. It was awful and messy, and I swear, like, it was it was just like you know, a mosh pit happened in a fancy store full of glass vases. Mm-hmm. Is how I felt about that. Are these? I mean, it's so physical. Oh like yeah, guys with doing, ours, like, with your guys's performance, it's yeah. so intense. Yeah. With your show, I mean, it must be one incredibly exhausting afterwards. Mm-hmm. Actually, the opposite. Right? No, I'm like, I'm so energized and so, so pumped. Energized, like, yeah. so cathar- like, but it's it's, just, I definitely want to see. I'm, it must be very cathartic. Right. Yeah. Like you get out. It's empowering. So much. The, okay, the thing is that I've been. I've known this woman for almost a decade, mm-hmm. and we both really enjoy rough play. Mm-hmm. And when you can roll up your sleeves and go to town with someone, where you have a level of communication and honesty. I can do shit to this woman that people will never even be able to approach. We do performances where people walk away and they're like, I, like, my, I'm unsettled, like, my stomach's queasy, and then people, like, think about it and they have to, like, process it, and we get emails, like, months later and people are like, I wasn't able to forget it. This, this woman here, I can skull fuck her until her eyes can't get uncrossed. I can drown her, I can stomp on her head, I can punch her, I can you know, choke her by her own hair. Like, it is really intense primal energy that when people are, like, watching it, it's just, like, like they forget to breathe. Now, it, that you, it's one in a million to find someone you can do that with. This, something like this does not come along every day. Aww. I know, I assure you, she's magic. She's magic. And so are you. And getting to interact with her is just, like, I first booked her as a demo bottom because I don't know if you're aware of this, she has fucking no gag reflex. She could deep throat, like, 11 inches and just... Her, I just, she's fine, just, it's me. Okay, I don't understand. Okay, yeah, yeah, you're her, okay, anywho. So, I, bo- I first booked her on her ability. I like how that's making she, you shy. She can fucking, she can, she can suck a dick like you would not believe. It's, <laughs> oh. amaz- it's amazing, it's amazing. Anyhow, and then, yes, ow, ow. And then as it turns out, not only can she suck dick like you wouldn't believe, she can take like a, a level of pounding. <laughs> Where it's like most people would like, I'm like, look, I'm going to skull fuck you, I'm going to punch you, I'm going to bite you, I'm going to choke you, and I'm going to drown you in a bucket of water. Most people aren't going to sign up for that. You well, forgot that I asked for the bucket of water. That was my specific the, the, the bucket, you, she's a genius. She's so, a genius. I'm the, all about drowning you in buckets of water. But I mean, there must be an incredible bond and understanding in terms of limits and safety oh, yeah. for the two of you. So the irony... Because you can't just sit there and go, I'm going to do this. No, you really without, have to know what you're doing. Yeah. So so there's there's like kind of like a two-factor authentication going on um, with that type of relationship. The irony is the more that I trust somebody, the less negotiation and limits that happen. Because I know those people that I give that um, license to that they can read me to a certain degree. They know that I'm going to communicate mm-hmm. either verbally or non-verbally in a certain way. And um, we go over very minor things of like, you know, maybe we'll do this in the performance or the bridge will be, just don't do these things. Mm-hmm. Um, and so there, there is ironically less um, negotiation than I have with most people mm-hmm. because the degree I know which the respect and the communication during performance that might not be visible to other people but will understand we're communicating the entire time yeah stop yeah and um is it's so very clear and I also know that when we fuck each other up we play under what's called um for kinky people um rack rules which is risk aware consensual kink which means we go into it knowing that it's not going to be all fluffy rainbows and flowers and right. shit might get fucked up. Because mm-hmm. that's the places we like to go to. Right. And so we know when we're signing up for it that there's a certain degree of risk involved. Mm-hmm. And we also know how to take care of one another if a oh shit scenario happens. Like, like a labia being attached to a sure. bomb. 
like they you know just maybe really stuck to that like, thong to my wow labia can really stretch Ooh. like like you know giving your friend PTSD about anyone removing your underwear I, we it's new limit uh, new limit found and it's getting better but like you know it's like we 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 definitely had the discussion of like no it's totally cool that it happened because like that was the energy we're playing with you are not allowed to remove my underwear in any fashion like that. Um, you know, for for a while, like it's probably not going to be off the table forever. But like, right now, I'm having some strong feels. Like right. whenever somebody like tries and to, it's respect and being yeah. able to wear. But even with the knowledge and the safety and the control, like things happen, and you have signed up for that. Where you've gone in with your eyes open. But like, yeah, it's it it's definitely something that I. It sounds like you have to really get to a point, like. It would not be something just anybody could just run out and do. No. We, we happen to teach people teach how to classes. do these things. Mm-hmm. Um, right. We teach rough play. We, we teach people all the fucking stupid things that we did first so they don't have to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, so, no. You, like, you know, I had... Uh, That's very crucial. That's a big mm-hmm. thing because... Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, there are a lot of people who are into some various level of physical play. Where they are on that spectrum is for them to figure out. But, like... The performance side of things, it's, it's just requires so much of an understanding and, and the ability to shift and the gears so quickly. Anatomy and communication and reading people, com- the perf- level of performances we're doing combined, we're bringing almost two decades of experience to yeah. the table, and you you have to have that knowledge base in order to do the shit we do, or right. it would go sideways. Right. And it's like people are like see stuff and they're like that, holy shit, that's amazing. It's like you don't just wake up and do that. Like we're bringing years of ex- practical hands-on experience to the table in order to even do a performance like that. And even the best show can have a moment that right. can be can go south, but it's it still so, was So, so that's a, the thing is moment. that like I want to say that that was a moment that went south, but it was such an amazing moment and I wouldn't take it back for my like that in some ways that made the performance of just like how much energy and trust is built into that. Mm-hmm. And just like how crazy we can go, oh, like crazy. it doesn't mean that I want to replicate it anytime soon. <laughs> that's fair. Because I think it that's hurts fair. like a son of a it bitch. Does. Um, you know, like fish hooks in your asshole bad, but you, you'd Note be surprised. Self, ask you about your knowledge of fish hooks in your asshole. Go on. Um, and uh, it, but at the same time, like just having that like raw moment, um, it you still can't get any better than that. It, yeah. Just, it's just so what makes it's, it it's magical. It. It's it's magical being able to do that with someone. It's cathartic and it's exhilarating, and you don't get something like that every day. No. Yeah. That's awesome. Thank. You. That's a that was a great story. I mean, that touches upon a lot about what it is that you guys do, and I think that that's a really cool. That was a really great example of a best show. You know, I mean, especially even with all the moments of, of a moment that could go either way. There's so many. Right, it's hard to pick one. I mean, we we, we won the lottery. Mm -hmm. We get to do cool shit for a living. Yeah. How crazy is that? No, I mean, it's an amazing... It's an amazing uh, type of art that you're doing. And I have nothing but respect for it because so many people wouldn't be able to do it. Like, I think think you you nailed it. It's both of you are very uh, uh, unicorns. (laughs) You know, you're able to do this together. You found each other. You have this trust. It's a performance that people are responding to. You guys have fans. People are really excited about it. I'm so I see bad more at and more about. You are. You are more bad and more about. Fans. <laughs> just, you cannot it? rank with awkward fans. turtle. No, no, I, I can. I just you I don't, just don't. You, no, that's what I mean. Well, you you can, but you don't. You, the, well, we've talked about like my ineptitude about like she's social media for self promotion. She doesn't. She can't promote herself for beans, and she's so much to promote. I I just, I've been trying recently. I've been trying. Really I believe hard. in you. You can do it. I just I don't know how to be like I'm awesome. Love you are me, awesome. and I'm like, you are awesome. but awesome. it's like so. I believe like, in you. But awesome. it's like so hard to like no, say no. that about yourself. Don't even get me wrong. It took you some time to do that, and if you weren't working uh, for. Oh, uh, and the, no. I mean, yes and no. The thing with modeling for me, it yeah. was always very easy for me to promote myself, and the reason it was is that I love what I do. I love yeah. it. It it feels amazing. So the more selfishly I promoted myself, the more, the you more got I got to do the shit I love to do. Yeah. So for me, the promoting myself came so easy because it's like if I promote myself, I open myself up for more opportunities to get more of the cool shit I want to do. Yeah. 
So, I mean, I hate computers, but I will be on social media all day long because I'm basically trying to get more of the experiences I crave. And that's, and I mean, that, and that goes along with it. Those might be the things you don't think about when you do performances, but you really have to. No, I, so, I, just, I have delicate eyeballs. I'm fine. Oh, good, we can good. shut it off. Can we? Yeah. Easy. Yeah, it's, 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 it's like a spotlight. Yeah. I feel like I need to confess to something I've done wrong. No. Well, you do oh have that God. nun outfit, and now you're I about do. to talk. I do, I, will, the, 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 I do have the nun outfit. This is my, um, my... Uh, no, it's like her shtick. I love, I have, okay, here's the Anytime thing. Anytime I get, like, nun, nun-oriented, oh. like, images in porn, like I, ha- yeah. like, I end up sending it to her. The thing is, I was born in a cult run by a fat, bald guy with nine wives, and there, I had no Christian imagery whatsoever. Mm-hmm. But out of nowhere, I have a very strong, pronounced fetish for nuns like Roman Catholic nuns and it's like I grew up with like hippies I was homeschooled no TV no radio no newspapers like I shouldn't have this Catholic nun fetish do you think it's just the naughtiness of the button down Uh, oh probably something like you know yeah perverse perverse nuns doing fucked up shit just gets me all hot I came from I grew up in a Catholic school at one point so it took a long time for me to really comprehend why a Catholic school girl outfit was Oh. really sexual because I just remember so sexual it, Catholic school girl outfits are just I get ugh. yeah and I get it right, right. I get it now right. but when you're a kid and you're like the sexiest thing about a Catholic school girl when you're going to school in a Catholic school is that's awesome is basically uh, when they're in their normal clothes you think they're the sexiest things ever because you've really? never you seen, talked about that with yeah, Ray because every mm. time you see you see them they're in that same outfit and they're not really the real ones aren't really designed to make anybody look good they're just right. sort of boxes that everybody has to wear but later on like yeah I get it yeah now you know if somebody <laughs> would so you know Great. one of you guys were to prance through here in a kind of school outfit I'd be like what good luck. <laughs> you know but like but when I was like at first it was like what really really because I don't know, man. It wasn't really I just I want to destroy innocence on the end of my dick. So no. so I this mean, this picture sense. says it all to me where it's this horrendous outfit and it's being pulled up and then their pantyhose and pennies are being right pulled down at the right level. at, at yeah. the chest. Yeah. So it just cups the ass. And no, then, I get it. This is one of the, the reasons I love thigh highs so oh, much. Like my own personal eyes. fetish oh, because thighs, I love yes. this top skin and mm-hmm. the, the mm-hmm. yeah. No, I am totally um, thigh black thigh highs right underneath the butt cheek. That's that's oh, yeah. it. Yeah. That's no, it's just it's a very oh, that's yeah. We employed that fetish today actually. We did. We did yeah. and it worked for me. Yeah. My boner was fierce. It was. Okay. <laughs> boner was fierce. Okay, so if that's the best show, what's the worst show that you guys have had to perform? Well, no, that was her best show. Oh, excuse no, me. Sorry. No, 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 please. Go I, have the, I have the crucifixion. Oh, so the let's thing talk is about that. it's not like that she's right and that was totally magic. Um and uh, it is, you know, top 5 memories that I have um, the 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 best gig that I had for me was a shoot called Fear the Woodsman and uh, Fear the Woodsman mm-hmm. was shot in uh, upstate New York okay. and um, the concept is that I uh, my car breaks down by the side of the road and I get abducted by a masked man who hunts me through the woods with a paintball gun and the director doing it uh, Matt Williams he Turns out he's a really good aim. I had no idea how much fucking paint. Like he grew up oh, yeah. in the country, he knows his way around a gun, and I am running as fast as I can, and he's just nailing me with his paintball. But just, and I mean, they, they fucking hurt. They hurt. They hurt. Yeah, and I got hit a lot. If you want to be a really big dick face, you freeze them first. Oh yeah, he didn't go so far as to freeze them. I guess I should be grateful for that. You should be. He's and then, much of an asshole. And then he <laughs> he grabs me and he um. He has very talented fingers, and he can make me squirt in about 15 seconds. He can just rip orgasms out of my pussy. And he's hunting me through the woods with a paintball gun, grabs me, rips off my shorts, finger bangs me, I'm squirting everywhere, like I can't even get my eyes uncrossed. He like slams my head into the dirt, and in the next scene, they actually had to use a crew of eight people, and they needed to take a a, uh, tractor trailer, and they had to dig a hole, and they... took all day to prep this scene and they he crucified me he hung me upside down he tied huge boulders off my breasts he put a plastic bag over my head with a breathing tube he lowered me off a pulley while I was crucified with a bag on my head 
into the ground. He buried me. So I just, I'm completely underground and I'm just breathing through the breathing tube. I have a, through the crucified um, cross form, I have a dildo that's tied into my pussy. And then while I'm underground, he starts caning the back of my calves and he's using a, a battery operated handheld vibrator on me. So I'm upside down, buried underground, vibrated, what caned. Overwhelming like amount of sensations how that you are dealing with at one time. So how do you get caned underground? Well no, I was buried I was buried up to my breasts. Okay. So the whole like so you know, your whole load, ass my whole ass and legs and, and vagina. vagina are out. So, right. so all the like all the all the all the super super usable fun parts are hanging out. It's just the, who needs the face, right? That's buried underground. Yeah, don't, don't, don't worry about that. that. Don't need that. Um, and like that, that is why I got into porn. Like I did, had no interest in going down to LA and just jumping on some dude's dick. Yeah. Like for porn, for me, the the type of porn I do is uh, performance art, and I'm really curious with exploring my body, and I'm really curious to see how far I could go, and it's it's very zen for me. It's very grounding. It's meditative. And I'm like, totally I can't, is. yeah, it's so, it's so relaxing to be in a position like that. I, that's what my sex life, my sex life requires a tractor and a crew of eight people. I can't go on Tinder and swipe right and find someone that could take me up the side of the mountain, crucify me, bury me upside down, like, you know, and cane me. Like, it's, you, you need a crew of people that know what they're doing. Like, mm -hmm. I do the type of shoots where you need an EMT on set. Mm -hmm. I was, I was, um tied upside down uh, on a Sibian. And a Sibian's like a $1,500, the world's most expensive vibrator. It sounds like a plane taking off. And then they it lowered... It totally does. It does. It's super loud. And then they lowered me into an eight feet dunk tank, upside down, breathing through a scuba mask while I was attached to uh, a, a $1,500 vibrator. And you don't have any sensations of panic at no. any of this time? There's no what? way I would... I don't panic. Like, right. the thing is... Not we everyone can. About that. Not everyone can do the type of stuff I do, and there's I mean, a lot of shit. You're borderline, like literally, you're you're like an escape away from being Harry Houdini at this point, like the kind of. Except she doesn't want to escape. I don't want to yeah. escape. But that's. A, but I mean, you're putting yourself in those kind of positions, so I I imagine the sensations must be. It. I'm not doing anything that scares me, and right. there's like there's stuff like for instance the cattle prod. I was telling you I don't do cattle prods anymore. Cattle prods, off the table. I don't. Not into cattle prods. <laughs> I've tried it. The last time I did a cattle prod, I had to back up into a cattle prod 40 times in a row. And after that, I was done. I, maybe yeah. I only had, I had 40 in me. <laughs> and after that, I was like, you've used all of them up they in found, this lifetime. They yeah. found, the, 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 they the, found the, your yeah, number. The, well, I think 40 is a good number. But yeah, I mean, you definitely can get PTSD from some stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah um, but, but, it, but it's really funny because like, uh, we, we actually <laughs> talked about um, the fact that, uh, that she doesn't get these fear fears or triggers because she knows she inherently knows how safe it is yeah. and it was it was fascinating when we were talking about it because I get into that headspace where I can get scared like I inherently know that I'm safe the entire time which is why I've consented to it but I also like let go to the point where like I basically have like the suspension of disbelief going on uh because we're talking about the drowning she's like maybe I'm not doing it right and then we talked about her overall arc of her performances and why that is. Like, well, because anyone I would let do that, I, I kind of fucking I trust, trust them. them implicitly. And, like, it was, for me, it was just like, that's so curious. Because, like, I feel the same way, but that's the reason I am able to let go and have that suspension of disbelief. Just, like, being able to put into my brain, like, well, what if? What if they're big fat? Yeah, my brain doesn't go there yeah. at all. Like, our brain approaches moment, it in yeah. a totally different... It's not yeah. that I... I mean, it's not that I, I... It's like the same way, but like a different yeah. outcome. Yeah, it's not like you can't get scared. It's just in this moment you are... You I mean, I'm, oh, I'm totally terrified. I'm scared the entire time. That's why I'm doing it. That's the journey I'm seeking to go on. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, I don't... For me, being buried underground upside down isn't, isn't triggering for me. Like, mm -hmm. a lot of the... There's lots of stuff I can't do, and the stuff that I can do, the people are like, holy shit, that's extreme. Oh, yeah. It doesn't seem extreme to me because I'm in my comfort zone. I'm doing shit that's easy for me. Right. So, and it's just like where my natural flavor, like that's easy for me, might not be someone else's. You um, put a book upside down on her bookshelf, though. Oh, fuck that noise. Hell in the hells to the no. Did I tell you? Did you? Did you? Fuck, you didn't. Did you go? I'm going to have to inspect my library. You bitch. Did you? You did, didn't you? I'm gonna go look. 
No. Oh, I think she fucked with you. Oh my god, she's so evil. Don't let this cute fucking deceptive... She had paid me back, I'm guessing, because I might have tickled her and punched some bruises today, and she got all feisty. So now she's gone and fucked with my books. I have OCD. I don't do well with things being out of place, and she knows it, and she's a sadistic bitch. Cute-looking sadistic bitch, not to be trusted. Fair and much. now I have to inspect my entire house! Because you put... Yo, oh, she tampered with something. Or... Basically, That's challenging. Or is making you think. No, I don't know. I can't... I won't be able to relax until I go look now. I'm very... I'm very distraught. I'm sorry. Hey, Rain. Yeah, did you what? No, I didn't. Oh, thank God. <laughs> See, that's but, hard. See? That's that, hard. That, that's hard. This is, that, that was her scary place. That's, I can be a buried <laughs> underground, I'm fine, but she fucking don't tamper with the I, I already said that I would do that if she, she said was that being she would, so mean. So she planted it in my uh, head. Yeah. And she could have just, That like, was a long follow-up. There, yeah, that was Your a couple evil hours. Evil smile the entire time. Dude, I just... don't. I mean, no, she well, she knows that evil smile can indicate that I'm either she, fucking sure, with her she or I fully fucked with her. Done it. She could have fully done it. I would have had to go home and inspect my entire house to put things back in order. The books she... are safe. Okay, good. All right, I'm fine now. <laughs> I'm fine. It's okay. Fair enough. Oh, All right. She's so with dangerous. that, she she's is. Dangerous. Oh, I definitely know that. So with that said, what was one of your worst? Go as ahead. long as it's a safe and thing uh, you can talk about. That you oh, know. no, I can I can talk about it because I wrote about it. Um, my, my oh, worst, I know what it is. Yeah. No, yeah, oh, it's that one. Yes. Yeah, um, my worst performance was that I got booked to be on the BDSM stage for the San Francisco Exotic Erotic Ball. Oh, okay. Now, I've worked the Exotic Erotic Ball, uh, you know, um, for Charles Gatewood's b- uh, booth when he was selling books. Like, I've been there, and... It's kind of like a, it's a very sexual energy. And they kind of think that the BDSM people are like, oh, that's a little weird. Like, we're, we're here for, oh, we're getting our tits out. Check us out. Tee hee. It, it's super and, L.A. style. Yeah, it's not. And, and um, I mean, I don't didn't have great experiences with the exotic erotic ball to begin with. Because the first time that I went there, I was helping work a booth and selling, um, you know, erotic photography books. Mm-hmm. And I went to go to the bathroom. And on my way back, I got cornered by four guys um, who threw me up against a wall and attempted to start fingering me. And I mean, that's the, oh, it's like, oh, like, you know, swinger energy, sexual energy. It's like, I don't know you. I'm not interested. I was fully clothed. I wasn't asking to be thrown against the wall and finger banged by four guys. So it literally hid on the um, local kinky people stage that they had for performing. And I was so much more comfortable being there. Right. Yeah. The exotic erotic has some shitty, shitty experiences with it. People get weird with their sexuality. So I, I felt, you know, I'd already yeah, had some do. negative experiences with it because it's just, the guys get drunk and then they're basically thinking any woman there is, is saying that she's willing to fuck and uh, they don't, they forget about consent. So um, if you're there as a woman, you have to have a booth to work at, you have to be with a buddy, like you have to have a wing person, you, just, you can't wander off to the bathrooms unescorted and not, you know, get molested. Like, I mean, these guys were attempting to fucking shove their fingers in me. Anyhow, not a fan of exotic erotic. I'll go on the record saying that. And um, I, I was work, uh, booked to work the BDSM stage. Now that's already like, oh, those weird, like, kinky BDSM people. They don't want to just have vanilla sex and put, like, penis in holes. How fucking weird is that? And, um, but I'm like, these, I'm with my people. I'm with my tribe. These are good people. And um, I uh, was going to be a submissive. For the night, and I was uh, booked to work with this guy who is. So a, you a switch? I'm sorry. Oh, I'm, I'm a switch. Okay. Yes, yeah. Uh, I'm a. I am a pansexual switch. Okay. I'm greedy. I'm a poly pansexual switch. <laughs> I want all the flavors. Hey, uh, cheers to greed. Amen. Amen. You know, she understands. Um, I do. I'm known primarily for people tend to think I'm submissive, which is hilarious because you've met me. Um, but I am a masochist, and people confuse that, and they think that if you're a masochist and you're getting beaten. Therefore, that must somehow equal submissive. When looking into you in preparation for this interview, it was my impression that you were dominant. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Great. Yay! Uh, yay finally! Change. High five! It's yeah. about fucking time. That only <laughs> took a decade. Holy shit. Well, okay. Good. Uh, yeah, it's like a long, initial, that's been a long time coming. Oh, it feels good. The initial... Good. Oh, it's tasty. I like that. Okay. <laughs> I'm glad that, I'm glad that was... I it's about it. time. I was God! <laughs> okay. Anyway, you just so made her like whole you did. Month. You just told me you have no idea how happy you made Good. me. That's delightful. I feel all warm and fuzzy inside now. Uh, so um, I do like a, a good thumping, and um, the guy that I had pi- I was told I could pick anyone I wanted, and this guy has a reputation uh, in the local scene. 
He's known to be real hardcore, real badass. He's the big bad wolf. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you want to ask the big bad wolf to dance. You're curious. Like, let's, let's, let's get dark. Let's get heavy with that shit. I don't want light and fluffy. I don't want the fucking rainbow and the glitter. Like, let's get let's, freaky. Let's, let's roll up our sleeves and go into some dark shit. I knew what I was signing up for. Um, he, I had heard that he's uh, not really good with safe words. Um, for people that don't know, safe words are a word that you use to uh, end the scene or say that this situation's not working. Right. Um, and But I had heard amazing things about how good he is with pushing people, and his play partners like this guy is totally incredible. And I'm not an idiot. So uh, we actually did two test runs where we kind of practiced the performance that we were going to do for the stage. And both the test runs I did with this guy at a local dungeon, totally fine. Energy was good. We were communicating well. He was able to push me. It was challenging, but fun. I had a really good feeling about it. And we get to the night of the performance, and we get on stage. And uh, he takes me to the left of the stage, and there's a metal tripod. uh, And it's a tripod frame, um, and it's probably about uh, six and a half feet high. And you see it's kind of like a suspension point. And he gets me to this tripod and the first thing that he does is he locks my my hands with a handcuff and he brings it up really high and he puts it up to the tripod point so I'm kind of on my tiptoes and then he takes a chain and he wraps the chain around my neck and he tightens it really tight on one of the arms of the tripod and I'm having trouble breathing and I'm like hmm this isn't this is starting to not get good uh, I'm really gonna have to pay attention to my breathing I'm kind of uncomfortable with how much of a struggle it is for me to get air. And the next thing that he does is he takes a a vibrator, and it's one of those Hitachi vibrators, so it's strong and it's powerful. And I I realize now, like in retrospect, he was already so far gone. He was so pumped about being a badass, and he was on stage, and a bunch of people were looking at him, and sweat is just pouring off of him. And his eyes are glazed. And I'm like, oh, I could feel the scene starting to go sideways. And I'm like, this guy's not really in control of himself and he's not really paying attention to me and he's kind of lost. I'm, I'm starting to feel that things are not going good. And he took the vibrator and um, one of the things about me is that I come very easily. I can come in about 30 seconds. I can easily have 50 orgasms in a day. Um, it's not hard for me to come mm-hmm. and it's very easy to veer that into orgasm torture. If you guys can't understand what this is like, but as a woman, if you've had 30 orgasms in, in 40 minutes, you feel like you're gonna die. You can't breathe, you can't catch your breath. Like, totally you, it's, it's torture, yeah. it's torture. It's an orgasm, but it's torture. And he just puts the vibrator on me and he jams it into me. And I can't help it, I'm coming, and when I'm coming, I'm, I'm thrashing and I'm pulling away and the, the chain is digging into my neck. And he had me in such a horrible, uncomfortable position with my hands above my head that my fingers start to go numb. I'm, you know, you can start to lose circulation. And I'm having trouble breathing. And I'm, I'm looking at him and I'm like, I can't feel my fingers. My fingers are going numb. You're going to need to take me out. And he wouldn't take me out. And I'm like, Whoa. no, really, I can't. My fingers have gone numb. He wouldn't take me out. I look him in the face. I'm like, I'm having trouble breathing. I'm gasping. I'm having trouble breathing. He wouldn't take me out. And he's continuing to jam the vibrator in me. And I realize he's gone. Like, his face is sweaty, his eyes are shining, he has this fucked up grin dancing on his face, and he goes to shift the vibrator, and I look, and he's jammed it against me so hard, he's tore my labia, there's blood on the head of the vibrator. He won't take me out. He won't take me out. And eventually, I'm, I'm like, I'm starting to have, I'm starting to pass out. There's blood on this vibrator. He, I can't feel my fingers. He won't let me go. And with the last of the energy I have, I start kicking at him. And that was what broke through to him when I started kicking at him. And he was like, oh. And he like takes me out and I'm irate and furious. And there's a crowd, hundreds of people watching all this and he wouldn't stop. And I storm off stage and I'm, I'm just broken. I'm shattered. I, 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 I almost passed out. I can't breathe. Like my pussy is torn. It was a horribly negative experience. And when I tried- That's awful. Oh yeah. Oh, it was bad. And when I tried to uh, communicate this to him, his response was, you didn't say red. And red was the safe word. So I can't breathe. My hands have gone numb. And you need to take me down. Don't count. 
because what that could be like scene energy or I could be joking like I'm not joking like when I'm in a scene I can communicate and I had usually said, fingers going numb is just yeah, something. Yeah. I can't breathe like I can I can see right. but like fingers going numb is not like that's that's your bottom communicating with you like my Very hands clearly. are going like I've lost circulation in my hands like that is like hands down just yeah. not something that yeah. comes out in a scene and he's like i well, he's like well i had a different i had a different takeaway and i'm sorry that was your experiences and uh that was not my perception of the night no like he's like ba- basically wow. totally discounted uh, i've never i've warned people about him i've written about him um i am i am not a fan uh, of him at all and it's just and he's hiding behind the shield of the safe word is red you were supposed to say red you didn't say red Therefore, I'm not going to count anything you said to me because red was the word. He had decided, I'm going to go until you say word. That's, Never communicated that to me. That I, seems unrealistic. I mean, oh, it's I agree. so unrealistic. I, I understand uh, the safe word is a safe word, but there's lots of different signals that there, indicate there's, that. And he that chose there's to disregard all of them. In, in all fairness, like, I would never, like, I, I, I lecture people when they say they want to play tell my safe word. I'm like, all right, if you. And I'll be, I'll be like really realistic. I'm like, you want me to say for it? Here's the things you can do. It'll take you about like three minutes. Yeah. It'll be really easy. And guess what? We're gonna have a terrible night. Mm-hmm. Or yeah, you, the, the point isn't to get to, to the safe word. Yeah. Well, yeah. well, and some people like they're like, I want to beat you into like, I'm like, that's really easy. I can, I can tell you all the secrets of like what doesn't work for me and how fast you can get there. I'm like, but that's not the point. The that's point not is the dance. Having fun. The dance is to is to see the safe word and not get to it. You could be right. in the vicinity of it, yeah. but it's the it's the interplay and going back and forth. That's yeah. not the victory. Yeah, pushing right. how far you can go means never actually touching Touch it. Right. right. But like, just keep pushing that line back, just slowly right. edging I mean, it and, away. And your story is an excellent example of of how not having the bond with a partner Mm -hmm. and not having the ability like that you guys have together uh, that I was talking about earlier can can be so detrimental which is why you don't want to run out and just do this without training without understanding what you're doing it goes so wrong I mean I gave her PTSD and we have an amazing bond like it's it's so easy well we're playing with fire it's you're strapping on the roller coaster and you want the thrill and the excitement of the roller coaster no one wants the roller coaster to go off the rails the excitement is how dangerous it is, but you don't want it to blow up in your face. Yeah, no. That's awesome. I mean, that's a really great way to put it. I'm, thank mm-hmm. you for sharing that story. I'm so sorry that happened, of course. But that, I think, definitely sums up like how communication is so crucial. important and crucial. And it isn't just about a safe word, which I think for anybody who plays with safe words at home or in their relationships, like it's not the goal to get to that point. If you That's get in, somebody in, in my opinion, with someone who is an expert and has been doing this for many years, if you get someone to a safe word, you done fucked up, son. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you, you just never really want to get there. Like, like, right. and like that's why, like, anyone who like tries to be like, oh, ho, ho, that's why, that's why I'm like, well, here's the things to do. It. Like, that's yeah. really easy, and we're never gonna play again. Right. Right. It sounds fun. Yeah. No, I mean, that's it's, <laughs> it's, it's it, you're yeah. That's what the it's the whole changing of that like that changes everything about mm-hmm. the performance um, and and would ruin it or the experience of just even uh, off off stage uh, real quick before we go into the nothing one. with any of us in this room is ever going to go real quick but go ahead and right. try right good luck good luck <laughs> yeah, with yeah, that good luck. this will be an interesting episode to edit but anyway um, do you find that sometimes when you this is just something that just occurred to me while I was listening to you both um, do you find that sometimes when people that in your personal lives or outside of professional try, like as you said, you could tell when somebody is watched a lot of porn and they put their hand behind it and they cheat out to an imaginary camera, do you find that sometimes people try to uh, act a certain way because you are a professional at, and especially in these kind of things, like have you encountered people who try to really like bring their A game oh, when it's with you guys and you're see, like people get slow very, the fuck down. People get very handsy. What it is is that people because people have seen us naked, there's the assumption that, that, that we were public property. I think the question is about personal partners. Personal oh, personal partners. partners. Like, say oh, okay. you meet somebody and you're starting to... Oh, no, no, no. Not, I'm, I'm incredibly selective with my right. personal partners. That's very true. I'm, I'm so fussy. 
Right. And um, my biggest prerequisite for me to be with someone is they have to not give a shit that I'm rain to gray. No, no, that, that deal breaker. Right. I don't date fans. I don't. It, it, in, in, in a, well, I would like to say that your your latest partner did come up to you after class and <laughs> said that he has been your longest well, and been. and most dedicated fan. But he was a fan before I was Rain Degray. Yeah. No, I know. I'm dating my high school boyfriend. Oh, that's. Cool. It's been we were separated for 20 years. Like so, he was my boyfriend in high school, and we dated for almost a year. And then uh, it's been 20 years, and I ran off and became a BDSM porn star. And when him and his wife separated, he was single for a week, and he was like, hmm, you know, I really liked my high school girlfriend. I wonder, well, well, I wonder also, what she's up to. No, 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 wow. no, no, his wife. His was, wife became, she, yeah, well, the thing is, he was able to find me because his wife became kinky. Oh. And she, she like, she, their marriage wasn't working for him. She needed to explore kink, and then she saw that I was teaching classes. And she was like, isn't this your girlfriend from high school? And uh, my partner now. And he was like, uh, why, yes. Oh, she, oh my, I see. Interest. okay then. This is part of our alt family. We love yeah, everyone yeah. involved. Yeah, we And it's, it's like, you know, we just having everyone, bringing everyone together that's, is that's, amazing. That's a really cool So, story. and the only, the only way that my high school, because we didn't fuck in high school. Mm-hmm. The only way that my high school boyfriend's putting stick in me is that he knew me before I was trained to gray. Right. But yeah, my my I I don't. He's the oldest fan. He's my oldest fan. Got it. He really liked me in high school. He did. <laughs> really? He was a huge fan of me. In no, high school. it was, it was really? really good. That's what that's why I had to tease her. I'm like, yeah. well, right. that's strictly speaking. It's a little different. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know. But that's that's a really really. Ad- that, I mean, that's an adorable. It's fucking story. adorable. Oh, it's I know. It's adorable. nauseating. I have diabetes just relating the story. Okay. It's, it's so cute. It's, it's great. We're like just stupidly in love. So that's so bad. fantastic. Yeah. Congratulations. So, no, no, no. I have it's to really tell the gross, story. Though. I have to tell the story. This is how gross it is, right? So, him and his wife had separated. And he was like, okay, she's doing this thing now. All right. And I was teaching an oral sex class at the Citadel. And this guy came up during the break. And he was like, hi. I'm your biggest fan. And I was like, Okay, that's really, that's nice. That's very creepy. Okay, hey. Okay. Like, no, you don't understand. I've been your biggest fan since you were 16. Okay, now I'm soon. We're security. Okay, and he's like, what? Don't you recognize? And he was fucking with me. He's like, don't you recognize me? He's like, we dated in high school. And I was like, what? Are you kidding me? Like, he was, oh, he's like, he said, I looked the same. He looks totally different. He had dropped the weight and he'd gained the confidence. Mm-hmm. And he was like, I, his whole energy was different. And I'm like, oh, hello. <laughs> and um, he, uh, he... That's a pretty funny way to go. And he, he shook my hand. And he's like, I uh, would like to meet your husband. And he wanted to... Yeah, I'm Polly. And he, he was formally asking to meet with my husband in order to see if he could go on a date with me. And he took me and my husband out to lunch, and he was, you know, he introduced himself. He was totally ethical. He was totally polite. I'm like, I'm kind of kind of I had good taste in high school. He's only matured like fine wine and gotten so much better now. And he took my he took me and my husband out, and uh, we've been dating for two and a half years. Congratulations! Yeah, that's so cool. I'm so happy. Yeah, that's part of all of our family. Yeah, this, that's she's we're leather sisters, and she, we're, we have a tribe. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. So, with that very 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 sweet story what was your worst show i feel i almost hesitate to change gears like this because that was such a good story it was such a great story um so being a performer um one of the biggest drawbacks especially since um i don't do agent stuff because i don't live in la is people reach out to you and you have to both be receptive and cautious at the same time. Um, there are a lot of people who are not offering what they're selling. And you have to play it by ear. Um, and it's really fucking scary. Um, and I err on the side of overcaution typically uh, because of stories like this. Uh, and even though I thought I was being cautious, um, I walked, I got an email, um, and there was this, um, place in San Francisco, they did, like, live, um, live sex burlesque stuff, 
And so it was right up my alley. I love performing. I love live performance. Um, throwing in sexuality wasn't a big deal. Um, there was enough for me to like go and do this meeting. And it was one of those like art warehouse spaces, um, kind of like um, go ship and how that was. Mm. Um, and super carnival -y. And I had a small idea from this, um, <clears throat> this clip from an interview which um, definitely showed the best sides of what they were doing. Um, and I met the guy who was the proprietor and um, his, I don't even know how to describe her at the time. Um, I think he introduced her as like one of their lead performers. Um, but she got weird really fast, which is like, we want you to do an audition. I'm like, what do you mean, you know, like, well, like, oh, we want to do, like, like, you need to, like, come up into this bed area and do low job. I'm like, Ex no. Um, and I had, like, previously gone through an experience, um, that was not sketchy where somebody asked me to, um, have sex for free and that's just not happening. Um, like, it happened to me once and it was a very reliable person. I actually turned down the page shoot that I was offered because of it because it like it messed with my morals so much and the only thing that didn't bother me is I would have had sex with that person anyways off camera which is the only reason I took place in it but I realized after that 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 was never happening again so when I got into this like weird circus like burlesque like in like what he was like what they were supposedly pitching like you know when my alarm bells started going off and they're he like, he's like, yeah, we're going to do this. Blowjob. I'm like, you guys can do that. I'm totally down to like watch. And he was like this really skeezy, not attractive, like older person. Like, and I lo like, I love older people. I love my silver foxes, but like he was just like, it was definitely one of those like creepy situations. Um, and he had like this small dick too. And it, like that part was just funny to me. And this girl was, like, engaging with him. And, like, we we're talking afterwards because, like, I was still trying to be, like, professional and polite because I don't want to set fires to people I know that are connected to other people that I know. So it's, like, this real, like, I wanted to, like, say fuck you and get the fuck out of there. But, like, um, I knew that I was safe because the whole guise was that it was totally consent friendly. But it was, like, definitely this, like, bullshit um, scenario for this guy to get, you know, young girls to fuck him. And I pretty much called him out on it in, like, the most, like, respectful way. It's like, you know, I am a professional performer. I, I actually don't like, like, I, I just want to let you know as somebody who's trying to get professional performers, I'm going to tell you why I turned this down completely, which is that you asked me to have sex with you for free. I have enough content out there that you can see my performances. And you didn't talk to me about my art or inspiration, what I could bring to this. And for that reason, not only am I not going to do this, but I'm actively going to tell people to step away until you change how you do this. And that's how I walked away from it. I got a text from the girl um, a couple months down the line thanking me for laying it out there like that because she left that situation because she was living in that space and she's like she's like you completely shattered the bullshit that was being held up in front of me for this amazing thing and I want to let you know that it was you know like while there were some performance it's exactly as scuzzy as you thought it was it you know like you know it was like, it was being used as, like, you know, his own, like, sex show, but it wasn't, like, there was no elevation, and other than, like, what he could get people to promote for him, and it was really meaningful for her to reach out to me, but, like, it creeped me out so bad that at this point, I am so cautious when I get those messages in that a lot of time I, I don't respond, even if it seems like a good deal, because if I can't see upfront content and they aren't really 
transparent about what they produce from the get-go, I want nothing to do with it. And I've watched some of those people who've emailed me come uh, come into their own skin and be amazing. But I, at the time, I was like, I can't take the risk because I'm not putting... Like, that situation could have gone way more sideways than it did. And I, there's no way I could do that. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm, I'm, I feel really blessed that the one thing that this guy like at least wanted to do is like like you know get you to think that it was a great idea um and if he wasn't of that mentality it could have gone a lot worse Hmm. so yeah our our worsts are super like creepy and violating yeah when it goes straight into that area Do, do you find that to be is that something that happens often or is it fairly rare um I think that people can easily put themselves in a situation where it could be frequent, but as I said, um, that because of situations like that, I completely am very strict about, um, you know, who I'll even perform for. Most of the people I've even shot for either are really big names of themselves or were specifically recommended by, like, very trusted friends that I wouldn't you know, otherwise I wouldn't have touched it with a 10 foot pole. So the number one advice to avoid these situations for somebody who's interested in this is to be picky. Yeah. Be, stream, you yeah, have be, to be picky. And it's okay to be picky. And like, you know, if you want to get into it professionally, get an agent, you know, that'll be like, maybe shoot one or two things on your own just to show that like, you're not like some, somebody who's not serious about it. Um, which is easy. There's enough production companies that will take applications directly through and then after that if you want to do it actually professionally and move down to LA get, get an agent um, because they'll keep you relatively like m- you know most of the agents will keep you relatively safe because um, if they don't then you go away and you stop making the money um, right they well, I mean yes I mean, yes yes and no, yes and no I've never indigenous. I've never had an agent yeah and I've been at this uh, definitely professionally um, I, you have to have a bullshit detector. You have to be very aware. And, and my biggest that, vow yeah, that, is that was my never, never put yourself in a situation where you need money so bad that you're going to overlook the obvious alarms that are going off. Your gut's going to tell you when something's wrong. Yeah. And often we're like, well, shit, you know, I got to pay my rent. And so you power through a situation you know is creepy. I always want to have enough money in the bank that I can walk away from a situation. I don't care how much I have to budget. I'm not going to get myself so lean that I'm like, oh, I have to hold my nose and power through a bad situation because I don't want to be homeless. Yeah, and that was, um, actually at the time that that one happened, I was very not financially secure, but I still had the same mentality that I always did with um, adult performance, which is I do this for me, I don't do it for anyone else. And, um, you know, I don't do it for, like, I enjoy the money that I get from it um, and use it, but I don't do it for the money. And, uh, you know, I wouldn't... It's your art. Yeah, it is. You know, yeah, it is. It is. It's, it's, it is art. You can't do it for the money. You can't do it for the fame. You can't yeah. do it for the fans. And the you money, have to do it because you want, want to do it. Yeah, and the money makes it sustainable where I can keep doing it in some regards. Some of it I would actually do... Um, I would Sometimes I would pay to do some of the stuff that I do. Legit. But yeah. um, because of the production value, they can't actually get anywhere else. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, getting paid makes it sustainable. Like, there's, like you know, degree of value to it and, like, valuing myself enough to, like, negotiate for, um, my own, um, cost, but it's, it is really important to, you know, not have to rely on that, and that's really hard, and I say that from a place of privilege where, you know, I can say that, that, you know, even when I was, like, broke, um, I was working for Madison Young in her art gallery, and I had, um, a place in the basement to go to sleep at and most people can't like mm-hmm. you know most people don't have the ability to magic shit out of their ass and be able to find a place to sleep no matter what and it's one of my favorite things about my community around um, sex and kink is that those friends have been by far that and the hacker community mm-hmm. have been the most supportive would drop everything to make sure that you're taken care of and I've never found communities like that um and there isn't a reservation there isn't you don't have to do anything 
other than be yourself for that to be a reality and it's it's kind of magical we're privileged in that we've never had to do survival sex work we've done sex work because we were curious and we're perverts and we wanted to it's not like we were like oh if i don't suck this dick i'm not gonna have a place to sleep tonight no and that's a and people there's a misconception about sex work it's like oh we all have drug habits you know or daddy issues and you know we're totally fucked in the head and like we're doing this because we have no other life skills no, you're like, just doing it because you're perfect. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're, yeah, doing, we're it. doing it because we're You know, perverts. <laughs> some true. of the smartest people I've met have actually been, like, porn performers or, like, mm. you know, um, don't know her stage name, um, has, you know, a master's in mathematics and her partner's also performed Audrey porn. Audrey Rose. Audrey Rose, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and her partner has, a, that also has performed in um, porn has a PhD in yeah. biophysics. Like, right. like, like th- most of the people that, like, especially in the kink land, like, they're doing it for fun and for, like, right. a padding in their bank account because they can. They're not really even doing it for money. It's not like the money isn't nice, but it's, like, particularly in the, the kink and BDSM aspect, we're fucking perverts. And we're spoiled, lucky perverts. Where okay. we get to operate the best toys, the best handlers, the coolest props... Like, you know, you get to do cool <gasps> shit, right? You'll appreciate this as well. Um, so for when I shot the insects, the Mormon porn uh, one, because I, um, so we're talking, I was talking to the director and he, uh, and I like to really ping off of somebody else's fantasies. It, like that gets like me going really easily. Um, telling me I can have anything I want makes me go blid. It, the, he built her a 22 foot high metal cross. It's true. I was helped put that thing together. That was no easy feat. Shit. Well, and it was great because, like, because, like, I'm like, if you're gonna leave it up to me, like, I have way too many ideas. <laughs> I'm like, do, I'm like, I want, I'm like, you probably don't get this enough. And I'm like, and I'm not saying this to like butter you up, but I'm like, do what you want to do. Like, that will, like, that will, that energy towards me is the best, like, it, it inspires me. And so he wanted to do um, a Mormon style um, shoot, and the other premise was like that super naughty underneath. So he gave me a budget of two hundred dollars for nice laundry. That was very specific, and I had just bought a um, Asian like maybe a day before a um, Asian provocateur set that I literally got to write off you know, and get paid for by doing this, by doing this shoot. So, like, it ended up working out. I'm like, great, I just bought really expensive laundry that I was feeling really bad about and kind of guilty, and now I don't feel guilty at all. Mm -hmm. Um, And it was amazing because, like, as you said, like, there's this 20-foot, like, cross thing that I got, like, put on, and, like, he also, like, hand-machined a metal cross dildo. And it's like, I want to shove this up your ass. I'm like, that looks so well machined. I can't say no. And I'm really scared of that, but we'll make it happen. I did the, the pretty girls for that, right? Yeah. And so I based the pretty girl, pretty girls are what we had the glamour shots before. Which so I'm I was terrible a, at. I was a, you were, so I did mine um, based on the virgin suicides. And uh, she, I had her outside and it was just, and she was the full Mormon and she's like lying back and like, the lighting was just perfect. She was outside, perfect sunlight, and she had her hair done, and she was against this, like, vibrant green grass. And it was great, because um, that's actually one of my favorite books by Jeffrey Eugen is, and I, like, when she's like, I want to do this, I'm like, oh, with Kristen Dunst, and she's, like, yeah. sprawling. I'm like, I get it. I yeah. love it. I can yeah. actually even get into that mentality, and yeah. it was the one um, reason I could. By the way, uh, one of the photos from those um, shots, I actually have for my business card for my actual professional work that we excellent that that is getting I, used for investors i love that and you're i using love it off no, of orange yeah, yeah. It, well because it's like fully clothed wearing, do yeah, you look yeah, really like prim and coat. proper and yeah, I, yeah and I, I totally look prim and yes, proper yeah. and it's the photo that my company is using for investors I love that oh, my <laughs> fucking my boner is rock hard right now i'm telling you dude down down jesus that's nice i like that <laughs> You've been listening to Devil Inn and Rain de Grey, sex educators, adult performers, and professional naked people. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, I just really like that term. As it happens, I decided in the end I wasn't going to really edit this interview much at all. Uh, and I have pretty much presented it in its entirety. So I, I just feel like the stories they had to tell were ones I really thought everyone should hear. So I really hope you enjoyed this episode of 3 Gigs, because I really did. Thank you so much, ladies, for coming on the show. If you'd like to find out more about Rain de Grey, check out raindegray.com or raindegray.net, or just find her on social media by searching Rain de Grey on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and FetLife. She has a full list of classes that she teaches and podcasts that she hosts on her website, and they are very much worth checking out. Devlin admits that she's not nearly as prolific as Rain is online, but you can still find her by searching Devlin on FetLife and she's very excited about her work with kinkbnb.com, a website where you can rent spaces when you're feeling sexually adventurous. If you're looking for a place to play, Devil Inn can help you find it. Thank you so much for listening to 3 Gigs. You can find out more about the show at 3gigspodcast.com. You can also find us and give us a follow on our social media accounts at Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram by searching 3 Gigs. And let us know who you'd like to hear on the show. I'll listen and do my best to get them on. If you're an iTunes or an Apple user, please take a moment to visit our iTunes page by looking up 3 Gigs Podcast and rate and review the show. Those ratings and reviews are the best way for 3 Gigs on iTunes to reach new people and for new listeners to discover the show. But honestly, no matter what platform you listen on, if you like the show, tell a friend about it. Because, like the music scene, that's the best way. Word of mouth is the best way for anything to do well. So just let people know if you like it. Our theme music today is I Don't Want to Hear It by Minor Threat. My name is Dom McDavy. This has been 3 Gigs. Thank you so much for listening. I'll see you next time. Still there? Awesome. Rad. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed the show. I know it was a long one, but it's worth it. Listen, really quick, I wanted to let you know that my band Tsunami Bomb has some shows coming up. And if you'd like to come out and see the show and say hello to me and talk about three gigs, that would be fantastic. On Saturday, February 17th, Tsunami Bomb will finally be returning to the San Francisco Bay Area for an all-ages show at Bottom of the Hill in San Francisco with The Atom Age off of Asian Man Records and Dirty Denim. Tickets are on sale now, and what I understand, there's not many left. So if you hear this and you want to come, grab them while you can. In May, my band's returning to the East Coast, and we cannot wait. On May 16th, we're going to be in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania at the Kung Fu Necktie. In May 17th, we're going to be coming to the Boston area at Once Ballroom in Somerville, Massachusetts. And on May 18th, we'll be heading north to take part in the 8th Pooza Fest in Montreal, Quebec, in Canada, with bands like Real Big Fish, Anti-Flag, Get Dead, War on Women, A Wilhelm Scream, Cancer Bats, The New Trust, and more. And then we finish that run on May 19th at the El Cortez in Brooklyn, New York with Trashy and Fat Heaven. You can get tickets for all the shows at our website at TsunamiBomb.net or you can find them at the club's perspective websites. Come out to the shows and say hello. I want to hear about your first best and worst shows and what you think of the podcast. And you can even stick around and see what my band actually sounds like. All right. I hope to see you all there. Thank you so much. Have a good night. (laughs) 